Hey guys, this is Kai, and right now I am inside of Mordog's Twitter where he dropped the A patch for the PvE before it drops tomorrow onto the live servers. So in this video, we're just going to quickly go over the changes that are being implemented and see how these changes might affect the meta, even though realistically, I don't think it'll affect it too heavily, but there are a few key takeaways that I think we should, you know, make sure we cover. So... First off, on the champion side, nothing is that significant. The only significant changes are the Lissandra, Rek'Sai, and Samira changes. Why do these changes matter? Well, Lissandra, Rek'Sai, if you don't know, Rek'Sai reroll has sort of been a bit of a menace on the PBE, so glad to see that it's getting slightly nerfed. Don't think it changes much, though. If you've played Rek'Sai, you would know that it's still really strong. Nothing is going to change here. So Rek'Sai reroll is still very strong. Definitely not SS tier, but maybe still S tier, right? Um, the Samira one I want to talk about a little bit because... One cost reroll comps can be very oppressive if the first augment is a silver augment. Now, why is that the case? Well, it's because of honor roll. The honor roll augment, in my opinion, should be almost a prismatic or at the very least a gold augment because it's way too strong for the value that it provides. It's stronger than trade sector for sure. And it's like supposedly even better than the prismatic version of Lee Sin's augment on 2-1. I forget the name of it because no one ever takes it. It's the reason why it's so strong is because you basically get to force any one star reroll comp you want. You basically just donkey roll at level three, pick up any upgrades, you sell your upgraded unit, and you keep buying one cost units until you hit all the one cost copies that you need. You usually are able to get sneak away with anywhere between like one to like nine, ten different rolls sometimes if you're really like hitting all these pairs randomly. Uh, ten is kind of high, but I would say like eight. Six, seven, eight rolls maybe is like not that not that far fetched, and you end up hitting a lot of copies of the one cost you're looking for. So, for example, for the Samira change, Ionia reroll is already pretty strong because of the way that you can abuse on a roll. But on top of that, with Samira getting buffed, it's possible that Samira carry with vertical challengers might actually be really really strong. Where you, we might see a lot of lobbies where people are hitting Samira three, Irelia three by like three one. 2-5 at the earliest, actually. I was I actually played a game um, yesterday night where I was testing out this theory, and I actually was able to hit, like, Jin 3 at 2-5 because I was able to hit so early. So I I wouldn't be surprised if they disabled on a roll slash Lee Sin's carry augment or Lee Sin's legend in general because it's, it's too strong for what it provides in silver lobbies. But moving on, though, into the trade section, um, nothing again to really take note here except for the Juggernaut getting buffed a little bit by 5% at all stages. And I will say this, Juggernaut, it's one of those emblems that I'm really worried about because Juggernaut, oh, I'm just worried about damage reduction in general. I think it's just way too strong of a trait. It's very difficult to hit a good balance for it. But for Juggernauts, Juggernaut Crest emblem holders like Gwen, like Katarina, they are very, very strong comps and very, very strong niche lines that exist. So if you get a very early Juggernaut Crest, I wouldn't I wouldn't say you can hard force it, but I would say like, you know, they're very strong, strong lines that you're that are available to you whenever you get to play it. Uh moving on though, going over to the Sharima side, this is the sort of the big one. Sharima 7 and 9 no longer double ascend. What this means is that previously, Sharima 7 and 9, you basically ascended once and then you ascend it on top of those ascended stats, you get a bunch of stats. Now, you don't get that anymore and you only ascend once. And sure, the ascension bonus has been buffed a bit, but compared to what it used to be, you're actually a lot weaker. So what this means now instead is that 3 is probably the way to go, 3 and 5. Sharima, where you can play something like Azir carry with the Nasus Cassante, and then maybe 2 shitters because you're looking for other better units at the meantime, but... 3 and 5 seem to be the way to go. I don't think 7 and 9 are as strong as they used to be. Not nearly as strong as they used to be. And if you're playing as your carry, chill with 3, flex around your other units. You have a J, you have a J4 on your board for strategist. You have maybe a Heimerdinger for that open slot. You know, play around with it. But again, don't think 7 is the way to go. Still, 7 with Streamer Spat is probably fine, but it's not as nearly as oppressive as it used to be, especially if you're watching Emily Wang's PvE tournament where every single player was running Azir. Moving over to Sorcerers. Vertical Sorcerers getting a bit of a nerf, which is good to see. We are seeing a bit of really strong lines coming out of the vertical line with Sona. I wouldn't say Sona reroll with Sorks is super strong, but it's definitely in there. Um, Sork Emblem in general is just a very strong emblem. It's a little restrictive, but still, really, really strong emblem that you can keep on your board. Amongst other things, I still think um, this doesn't change the needle too much. And Vertical Sorcerers, if you have a line, definitely can play it. Totally viable. Moving over to Void. This is the last big change of this A patch, where the Void creature's bonus health from Void now scales with stage, not with HP. What this means is that 
I don't know if Void is better or worse than it was before, but now comps like Reroll Void have just been nerfed even further. So like, there is a weird Void comp that was like 3-star Cho'Gath, 3-star Malzahar, and you try to tempo with that for whatever reason with Honor Roll. And it like kind of worked. I, I don't know too much about it, but this was sort of like a, it's sort of an eh change. It's hard to see, it's, or rather it's hard to tell whether or not this will actually like heavily affect the meta, but maybe Void is slightly better, slightly worse than it was before. Maybe Baron got slightly nerfed, hopefully, because 8 Baron or 8 Void rather is just very, very strong in general. It's not a win out, but it's definitely like a very free top four. Void is this very top four comp, if you will. It's not, it'll never win you out, but it's very good for top four. Um, I will say though, Void Crest and Void Crown being added and Void Heart and Void Soul being removed is a huge change. It's huge because if you got Void Heart, you basically got to play Baron at level 7 for free. And you just got to tempo out, you get a hard send it on level 7, find a Kai'Sa, find your 2 stars, upgrade everything, hit a Baron Nasher, you're chilling. So, it's a little, I mean, obviously you need the, the you know, the Belveth as well, but... It's, it, it is a little difficult to see that Void Heart is being taken away now because this means that now you have to push level 8 no matter what if you want to hit that Void, if you want to hit that Baron. But again, like I said before, Baron, it's it's strong. It's very strong. But is it like a win out? No, it's not. So we'll see how this turns out. I don't think Void will be like super popular at the higher end of the competitive lobby, but maybe like consistent top fours, fourths and thirds. It's probably where I predict where it'll end up being. Moving over to the augment sections. Now the legend augments... <sighs> Listen, man, who gives a fuck? Legend Augments on a competitive basis doesn't do jack shit. I think just run Poro if you want to climb. Vladimir if you're a pussy. Uh, that's basically it. But as we see, Vladimir's getting nerfed. So quite honestly, I don't even know if Vladimir's worth taking. So what I will say, though, is that Legends, while I thought was a failure of a mechanic previously, it's a failure in competitive, but it's really good for 4 fun players. So for TFT as a whole, it's actually a good mechanic. Um, it was really interesting that I didn't really think of it in this light until like pretty recently, but like Legends is cool for casual players. They get to force the game however they want to play. That's really awesome. And then at competitive level, it doesn't really affect competitive because at the end of the day, you're flexing around your augments anyway. So just run Poro so that you don't, you're not griefed one of your augments at 3242. You know what I mean? So definitely think that Legends for TFT as a whole, great. For competitive, who gives a fuck? Just run Poro. Um, moving over, Silver, nothing to really take away except that Harmonsis 1 is getting quite a large nerf. Harmonsis 1 was already sort of like a eh, I don't know if I'll take it, but now it's like, probably definitely don't want to take it. <laughs> um, Transfusion is also getting nerfed as well, the Vladimir augment, which is another reason why you shouldn't take Vladimir. As well as Silver, the all natural augment is also getting a nerf as well, and we'll see that all natural at most stages is getting nerfed, it's getting nerfed at uh, Silver and Gold. So... That kind of sucks because it was actually one of the better silver gold augments for like brawler crests or brawler comps and juggernaut comps. So seeing it getting nerfed kind of sucks. Harmonsis is getting nerfed at all three levels. Just keep that in mind because it was a very auto take augment. So now not so sure. You still get the same amount of healing, just less true damage. It's like more than halfway gone at the prismatic level where it goes from 70 to 30%. So keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the gold augments, again, nothing much to take away. The only ones that you should sort of take note is that the, you have my bow and you have my sword is getting nerfed again. These augments are like sleeper good. They're like, if you if the component works in your board, you should play the augment. It's actually like surprisingly pretty good. Like a team-wide buff is nice. You don't feel the effects as heavily as other augments, but it's still very, very strong. And that's why it's getting nerfed. Is it still takeable? Not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's still very, very strong and perfectly fine for your team. As for the other things as well, I think the only thing else you should just keep in mind is that idealism is also getting nerfed. Um, I really like idealism. I'm a huge Hodge believer, but seeing it get nerfed makes me a little sad, but that's just me being a little biased. Um, another thing too, Infernal Contra is getting slightly nerfed from 100 gold to 85. This augment, for those of you who don't know, it is one of the newer ones where if you, you are stuck at level 7 and you're given a huge amount of gold to pump onto your board and you just get to roll down and try to find like your units. I don't think this changes much about Infernal Contract. 15 gold is a lot of gold, but I mean, at the end of the day, you get an 85 gold boost and you just get a roll for your 3 star, 3, so, three, star, three cost and potentially even 3 star, 4 cost. So seems fine to me. I don't think that changes anything. I think Infernal Contract in the right spot is still very, very, very strong. Now that's basically it for the augments and changes, but 
keep in mind, don't go anywhere because this thread keeps going. There's some very important tidbits of information in here we should talk about. First off, the official augment distribution table. This table will tell you what augments you can expect as the game progresses. I will say though, the way that this is sorted out fucking sucks. So I will probably make my own augment distribution table. Uh, and then I won't have it finished before this video comes out, but I'll probably have it out before I stream tomorrow because set drops tomorrow. I'll be streaming right as soon as it drops, like five, six in the morning Eastern. And then probably just like streaming all the way. I'll probably have a command somewhere so you can just get the distribution table if you want it. But I hate the way this is sorted just because like silver's here, gold here, prismatic here. But then there's more silver, gold, prismatics down here. And like that's kind of weird. So I like seeing all silvers at the top and then gold and prismatic for 2-1 because it always changes after that. You know what I mean? But anyways, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll let you know if I get the augment table done. But it should be done by the time I start streaming tomorrow morning. Um, moving over, Piltover tables. All the Piltover tables have been released. Out of all of these cash outs though, there is one very important thing you should keep in mind. Five loss sucks. Five loss sucks. Why does it suck? It's because there's a 30% chance that if you cash out your T hats at five loss, you will get a tome of trades. That is some horse shit. Imagine you five loss, built over two, one, five loss, all the way down to like 65, 68 HP. You cash out your T hacks. Oh my god, I finally get to cash out my T hacks. What is it gonna be? Toma traits? After a 5 loss Toma traits? You sacrifice like 30, 30, 35 HP for Toma traits? It's not worth it. So instead, what you should do is that you should cash it out at, at least 3 2, if you get it, you know, assuming a 2 1, where you can get significantly better drops. But I will say this though if you're playing Piltover and the lobby allows you to, 3 5 cash out is probably the best way to do it. Three, why 3 5? 3 5 is Early enough in the game that you're a higher tempo than everybody else, you'll be able to go level 7, and you'll be able to just roll down and just hit everything. On top of that, the cash out's way better down here, and you actually get gold no matter what cash out it is at 8 loss. So at 3-5, you can probably push tempo to level 7, 8 loss because you've been econing this entire time, and just get that extra pump of gold, find your units, get your items in there, win out from there. Get your 2-star 4 cost, find your upgrades, and you're chilling. It's a really good time, so... 2-1 Piltover is definitely really strong. I don't, this table is, I'm sure they'll change it in the future because this five loss Toma traits, it's, it's terrible. This is so bad. Uh, moving on, there is a six Piltover table too. If this is of any interest to you, I don't personally care about it. It's very difficult to hit. It's a very difficult chase rate to find, but if you hit it, good for you. Moving over to this one. This is some just statistics for the realms. This one in particular is for Thresh's Sanctum. He didn't release any other ones for whatever reason. I still wanted to see the Targon Prime drops, but they didn't release it, so whatever. But for Thresh's Sanctum, every 40 souls, you can get one of the rewards listed below. And all I'll say about this one is that, hey man, just slam ZZ Rod if you get it, and then play Void if you can, because the Voidlings and the ZZ Rods, they count towards the souls. And the earlier you hit your soul count, the faster you will be able to spike compared to everybody else in the lobby. So just keep that in mind. There's some other things in here too. Spoilers of war tables. Who gives a shit? Because this augment is terrible. This is a win streak augment that provides no combat value. That's pretty shit. Uh, don't ever take this augment. It's just, this doesn't matter. Uh, there's also the golden egg table. This is for those who are just egg enthusiasts. But, you know... If, you hit it, if you're already going to catch out your egg, you're probably going to win anyways. So, it is what it is. Anyways, that's basically it for this thread here. I will see you guys tomorrow. I will be streaming as soon as the set drops very early in the morning. 5, 6 a.m. Eastern. Usually is around the time where it drops from previous sets. That's what I've noticed. But, you know where my Twitch is. It's right here. The Ogden table. I'll try to get it done by tonight. Um, it'll definitely be done before I start streaming tomorrow in the morning. So... You'll have access to that. Just come by the stream, just type exclamation point augments and it'll be available to you. Um, I'll try to update the stream. I'll try to update the description in this video too. So like you have it in this video, but I mean, if it's not in the description, then it's at least in my chat bot and it'll be in the description within two to three days. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Happy climbing.